In this lecture, we're going to be looking at vector addition, which is the first of many ways to combine vectors together. We'll often use this to find the offset between two objects, such as, say, a camera and player, and we can also use this to apply external forces to our objects. Let's imagine that we have a top-down flying game where we're controlling a plane and want to start adding some wind effects to make controlling things a little more challenging. So let's add our plane to our graph and we're going to add it down here at the origin. And we're going to say that it's moving on the y direction for units. So we'll have a vector that looks like this. Okay, so now let's add a crosswind to affect the movement of our aircraft. And we're going to say the wind is going to be blowing in this direction. And to label these up, we're going to call this one A. And we're going to call this vector B. Now we are working in 2D here, but everything I'm about to show you will work equally as well in 3D. So we have the vector A is equal to 0, 4. And we have the vector B is equal to 2, 2. With that set up, how do we calculate the vector for our plane's new movement? It should still be going forward to some degree, but it's now going to be getting pushed off by our wind. Now, to make things a little easier to see and explain, we're actually going to move our wind vector. So let's move it up to here. Remember, vectors aren't always rooted to physical locations in space. So moving where this wind vector is on our graph really doesn't make a difference to any of our calculations. And with it set up, it should be fairly easy to see where this new vector will be. And all we really need to do is connect our two vector ends to complete the triangle. So this is our new vector, and this is the vector A plus B. And unsurprisingly, this is actually called the triangle law of vector addition. So all we need to do is add each individual component together. So our vector A plus vector B is going to equal the first x component plus the second x component and then the first y component plus the second y component. So in terms of our vector here, that would give us the vector a plus vector b is going to equal 0 plus 2 is going to give us 2 and then 4 plus 2 is going to give us 6. So that's really all there is to vector addition, but I want to show you another way of looking at this as well. So first off, let's remove our graph entirely to make things a little bit clearer. And now let's bring back our original vector that we drew for our wind. And I'm going to clear this label off because we need some extra space. But I'm also going to fill in this gap here to complete our parallelogram. And to make some of these scribbly arrows a bit clearer, let's relabel them. So we've got this vector's going this way, this vector's going that way, that one's going that way, this one's going that way. And finally, our A plus B is moving in this direction. Okay, so when you're adding vectors like this, it's usually better to put the arrow somewhere in the middle of the line rather than at the end, so you avoid this kind of mess at the end. And what we've essentially done here is created a parallelogram around this A plus B vector. And the reason I've done this is to show you that just like with regular numbers, we can add vectors in any order that we like. So just how you can have A plus B equals b plus a with numbers when you make them vectors nothing really changes so the vector a plus the vector b is the same as the vector b plus the vector a and i've just noticed we've missed a label off there so let's add that in and now we can kind of show this to be true because we can start off at our origin down here and we can either follow a along and then b so we've got a plus b gets us to this point at the end or we can follow this route and go B plus A, and that gets us to exactly the same point. But we also have two other options here. We can have just the tails touching each other, so A plus B, which was kind of how we set things up originally. Or you might have it so the heads of the vectors are touching like this. But all these four things are pretty much exactly the same. So that's all well and good for two vectors, but what happens if we've got more than two vectors? Well, this triangle rule and parallelogram rule are kind of going to go out the window, but the idea of adding these vectors together doesn't change, so we're still just going to be adding components together. So if we clear down some space, and we'll just sort of arbitrarily draw three vectors here. So we'll have one going this way, we'll have one going that way, and then we'll have one going like that. Well, when we add these three things together, what we're going to end up with is essentially just joining the two ends together. 
But notice that in this example, this vector and this vector are kind of working in opposite directions to a certain extent on the x-axis. And so what's going to be happening here is a little bit of vector subtraction as well. So let's look at that in a bit more detail. So we'll get rid of our simple example and we'll bring back our plane. When we're dealing with regular addition and subtraction, you can actually think of subtraction as just adding a negative number. So if we had something like a minus b, that's exactly the same as saying a plus negative b. And again, just like with our normal addition rules, the same thing applies to our vectors. So the vector a minus the vector b is the same as saying the vector a plus the negative vector of b. But what does one of these negative vectors actually look like? What does that actually mean? Well, if we take the example of our wind here, all that means is that the vector is now the same magnitude, but it's pointing in the opposite direction. So we can point this vector now in the opposite direction to make that negative b. And just like last time, to make things a little bit easier to see, we're going to move this vector around. And so just like last time, it's just a case of completing the triangle. So our new vector is going to be over here. And we can label that up as the vector a minus the vector b. And again, if you think about this in real world terms, it kind of makes sense. The wind is blowing off to the left, so that's going to affect our movement to the left. And it's also blowing against us, so that's going to slow us down and we're not going to travel quite as far. So we end up with the vector a minus the vector b is going to be equal to 0 minus 2. So that's going to be minus 2. And then 4 minus 2 is going to give us 2. And that checks out because we're at negative 2, 2 on our graph here. So that's really all there is to it when it comes to adding and subtracting vectors. Now, like we said at the beginning of the lecture, vector addition is incredibly handy for game developers. From applying forces like we are here with our wind to keeping track of the relative position of objects. So with that in mind, let's try a challenge. OK, for your challenge, I want you to imagine that we've got a player running around our game and we want the camera to follow them at a fixed distance. Again, we'll be working in 2D, but the same basic rules apply for 3D. So let's put our player at 5, 0 down here. And we're going to have the camera start at 2, 1, which is going to be here. So first, I want you to find the offset between the player and the camera. So that's going to be this vector along here. And once you've got that offset, we're going to move the player forward six units. So our player will now be at 11, 0. And at this point, we want to know where should the camera be positioned if it's remaining at a fixed distance away from our player. So what is this vector up here? As a small hint, you will have to use vector addition and subtraction. But once you've got your answer, pop it in the community form to let us know how you got on. And I'll see you in the next lecture. But this is quite a meaty challenge, so if you'd like some extra hints, then do stick around. OK, so for some extra help, first up, we're dealing with position vectors here, which are measured from the origin to a point. So it might help to draw those in to start with. So we have the position vector from the origin to our player along here. And we have the position vector from the origin to our camera up here. OK, so this completes our triangle. And this vector between our player and our camera suggests that we're going to be looking at vector subtraction. And what we need is the camera position minus the player position. And that will give us our initial offset. Once we have this offset, we're going to be moving our player away from this 5, 0 starting point to 11, 0. So when we move our player to 11, 0, we're now going to be looking for this vector here. And so we can use vector addition to add our fixed offset to our player position, and that will give us our camera position. This is actually a super common problem in game development. So hopefully this is enough to get you going with the challenge and hopefully explains some of the camera follow scripts that you may have seen in the past. So once you're done, also head over to the community forum and let us know how you got on and I'll see you in the next lecture. Mm -hmm.